So part of figuring out what's going on in this Keynesian aggregate demand, aggregate supply model is figuring out what determines consumption spending. Keynes was all about stimulating aggregate demand primarily through consumption spending, right? Uh, consumption spending, Keynes identified three factors that affect consumption spending. So we're going to talk about those right now. So the first one that we have are our disposable income. Now it's important that we talk about our disposable income, right? Because this is our income after taxes. So it's not just our income, it's the income that we actually get to keep, right? The second factor that we have is our expected future income. And then the third factor that we have is our total wealth, maybe our total net uh, debt that we have, right? As well as the total amount of credit available to us. So these are the factors that are going to be determining consumption expenditure, right? One of the main elements of aggregate demand, right? What is aggregate demand again? Aggregate demand is nothing more than GDP which is nothing more than Y, right? We, we represent GDP as Y, and the, we have Y equals C plus I plus G plus NX. So really, any kind of aggregate demand stimulation could be from any one of these elements, right? So these are the three factors of C. What are going to be some of our factors of investment? So we talked about this a little bit, but it's worth stressing again that investment in economics is not like investment in, you know, like if we talked about an investment in accounting, you know, if we talked about an investment in personal finance, right? Investment in economics is specifically talking about spending on new capital goods. So again, if you buy a share of stock, that's on the secondary market. That's not actually investing in anything, investment in the economic sense, right? It's investment, if you're investing your wealth into you know, financial product, right? So the personal finance, the accounting sense, it's an investment, but it's not an investment in terms of economic output and progress, right? So investment in economics is spending on new capital goods. It falls into four categories. For the sake of time, we're just gonna enumerate them. So we have producer, equipment and we classify that equipment into durable and non-durable durable meaning that it is not an intermediate good and it lasts sufficiently long uh three years or more we have non-residential structures so those are factories, offices, retail locations, so on and so forth. The weird one in here is our changes in inventory. So essentially, if you build up a bunch of inventory this year and you don't sell it, that is considered an investment because you have extra inventory next year. That's extra inventory that you don't have to produce next year. So inventory unsold is going to be an investment. And then lastly, we have our residential structures, but only the new ones. And so these are the types of spending that we have. And then the next question that we have is, well, how does a business decide to invest or not? So these are the four types of investment, but how does a business actually know to make that investment? And, in, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a physical or an intangible asset. They're going to consider both A, 
the expected investment benefits. Right. And so when we're talking about projects and stuff like that, we're really just talking about the future profit expectations. Another way to say that. And then our second one is going to be the investment costs. And specifically, when we're looking at investment costs, we're oftentimes looking at, you know, financing the investment. Uh, perhaps we have a bunch of money and we don't need to finance it. Well, then we still need to look at what the opportunity cost of putting that money in a relatively risk-free asset is, right? If you wanted, if you had some money available to invest for the next five years, you know, you could get a treasury bill and it pays 5% interest, right? So essentially that tells me that unless my project has a damn good chance of making more than 5%, it's not going to fly in these current interest rate environments, right? So the investment costs are heavily determined. These investment decisions are heavily determined by the interest rates that are prevailing in your economy. All right. 